Hey there, welcome to my video. Today we're going to be doing a design and then an animation of that design. I was thinking along the lines of a fairy and its mount. I'll try to do this voiceover quickly because I have covered my computer in order for it to be not making as much noise as it does because it usually sounds like it's dying. It's lasted a long time though, so that's good. <laughs> If I start screaming at any point in this video, it is because my computer has caught on fire from being covered for too long. Just so you know. The first set of drawings were a simple exploration of the mount idea. I started thinking about a giant horse that would make the fairy seem small, but then I realised that the fairy was either very large or the shire was very small. I was going to do some Shetlands and small horses, but I felt like I should do something unconventional to what a human would ride. And then I remembered little kids riding big dogs when they were younger. And I started drawing a Great Dane, but I realised that fairy is still kind of scarily large. So I went even smaller with a pug, but the pug was probably a bit inelegant for a fairy. So then I decided to do a cute little corgi wizard character but the hat would probably get in the way of the poor fairy and jingle in his face and also made him seem extra intelligent which would be slightly weird for him to be a mount if he was a wizard so I started thinking of a different type of corgi Here is the final illustration for the design It is a black and tan corgi druid with a male fairy with a warrior-esque aesthetic, a bit light on the armour for a warrior, but I imagine they're off on a scouting mission or something. The corgi I shall name Boris. He is much chonk and he is a very good boy with a permanent bleb. The colours are a bit different than I'll probably have for the vectors of Adobe Animate when I animate it. I've also kept the details very plain in order to animate it efficiently. The simple shading and highlights were done with types of layer styles. The shading I had blue and had on about 15% opacity. I never like to shade with black because that desaturates the image and shading will usually reflect the surroundings. I then did highlights with a yellow on soft light layer mode. I did it with a lasso tool so it could be hard. I don't like soft highlights. And then I used a half opaque rubber to go and soften the areas of the highlights I felt would be softer. It makes the image look a bit shiny, which isn't ideal, but at the moment I felt like that was the best way to shade. This whip is a bit of a mess. It's basically just blocked out shapes because, well, my slow computer and Adobe Animate do not get along. So I just block out the shapes with a thick pen. I don't even care how neat it looks. As you can see, it's rather ghastly, but it has the basic poses down and that's enough for me to move on to my next sketch stage. Sketch layer number two is only slightly neater than the first. It still has a big thick pen and I'm still zoomed out of the canvas in order to be most efficient with my really slow computer. It also has no head because I want to do that later as a symbol. As you can see the motion here is rather stiff but you can tell a creature of some variety is cantering. <laughs> Here I've added in the head symbol, it's very rough and it's just one drawing that's able to be repeated over the frames so I can concentrate on the body movement instead. Uh, I've neatened it up even more but it's still thick, I should probably work on having a more attractive workflow but it's efficient to have just thick pen and just concentrate on the movement 
which needs to be edited again because it's not very corgi-like. It's very long-legged animal and it's very stiff at the front. Of course, I'll edit that later. Here is after I went through and added all of the in-betweens. Previously, the animation was 15 frames on twos, but now it's 14 single frames. You see this makes it a lot neater, and you can see the motion a lot more. But now the sketch layer has gotten rather messy, so it's time to move on to another sketch layer. I've moved on to another sketch layer. I've also added tiny bits of details like the knee and the paws. As you can see the motion is much easier to see and I've refined the head a bit to help me understand how it relates to the motion of the body. The neck's looking a bit stiff so I probably need to edit that. Here I've added the rough, basic human shapes. It's very um, jittery and rough because I think I've only got it every other frame. And it's just a mess. It's just the shapes blocked out. I used the saddle as an anchor point as such it because it was hard to tell where the body is in relation to the corgi. I used the saddle instead as it moves with the corgi's back. To, to anchor him to the saddle so I could work out where he would be in each point of the cycle. Here I concentrated on secondary and tertiary action, added a tongue flopping, some ears, the ears were flopping in the wind. I started planning out his daisy crown as well as the martingale, I guess you would call it, on his chest. I made sure the martingale followed the contours of his chest it doesn't just go up and down it curves around the way his chest would curve i've also edited the neck and the head movement to be more dynamic here is when i separated the fairy into different body parts as symbols i don't usually do this for main animation but seeing as this fairy is just a big secondary action of the corgi, it's easier to animate it in parts and skip a few delayed boris processes, to be honest, mainly because I'm lazy. But the symbols mean I can animate it and then go back and fill in with the colours and lines later using only one drawing that's repeated across. Here I finished with the head animation, I have the ears and the tongue in the same symbol as the head because I felt it would be easier to organize that way. So I colored the head and it only took one frame to do that and it's updated to the rest of animation. That's why symbols are so useful for me, especially in cycles. Here is where I squished and lengthened the corgi once again. I felt like its proportions weren't quite corgi enough. So I made him longer with shorter legs. Of course, some corgis are even more extreme than this, but I felt that a corgi raised for riding would probably be one of the more less extreme examples of the breed. Here is where I did the lines for the body. As you can see, he is very fluffy. A good boy. I've added my usual heart, thigh, 
marking. I do that on a lot of my horses and animals in general. I don't know why, I just do it. There's a shape there, so I might as well make it a heart. I've also made sure that the fur is consistent across the frames, not just jumping about all over the place. And also some poor details were needed. Toe beams. Here I finished the coat of the corgi. I made sure that the each fur pattern followed each other and made sense directionally. It wouldn't look very nice if there were tangents or the coat in relation to the other white pattern and the tan pattern didn't make sense. So I made sure that the fur lines were consistent across the animation and you could actually follow each dip in the fur. Also painted the toe beans pink because toe beans. Um, now I've finished the human, I've gone through all the symbols and knitted everything as well as doing the connecting animations for the torso and the arm. It looks a bit flat at the moment, I need to add the behind limbs to give him a bit of perspective. Of course their colours have changed a lot to what I was originally planning but these colours suit vectors much more. I did the daisies by having one symbol and then duplicating it and animating it all on one layer which saves space because at this point my computer really wasn't getting along with Adobe Animate especially while recording the screen I couldn't actually view it at 24 frames per second Good times Here is the final piece. As you can see, it's changed a lot from the initial sketch, which is definitely a good thing because the initial sketch was terrifying. I've also changed the rider's um, motion a lot. I felt like when I looked back at it, he was a bit too stiff or the camera was like focused on his torso. So he wasn't moving up and down, which you would be if you were riding a ginormous corgi. So I've added a bit of up and down and bounce to his riding posture. So there you have it, a design and then an animation of design. I plan to do a lot more of these because I love designing creatures. I think I'll take quests on designs and then I'll figure out how that creature that we've made up would move and then do an animation of it. Also not necessarily cycles all the time I could do tiny little scenes as well, as well as more ambitious illustrations for the design. Of course, that is limited to how long old Betsy, my computer, lasts for, but I am saving up for a new one that will hopefully be able to handle the pressure of recording my screen a lot more. So I hope you hang around to check out my next video, and I'm off to have a nice well-earned cup of tea. See ya! Thank you.